to Huskers Unheard, a new narrative-driven Inside Nebraska podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Ekstrom. Being a part of a crowded media market, this podcast will be a stepping stone in modernizing the Nebraska media market, attacking in-depth stories that bring new perspective and insight to untold stories surrounding Nebraska athletics. From an athlete's journey to the Cornhusker State, from historical events, no stones will be left unturned for a podcast that looks to branch out and push the boundaries of media storytelling. Now, let's get started. The college volleyball season is right around the corner, as teams around the country are furiously designing tactics, strategy, and jostling for a spot in the starting lineup. But when you talk about what's transpired over the summer months, it's been an off-season that has built unprecedented momentum for an ever-growing sport. Part of that momentum can be contributed to the national championship that was conducted eight months prior. In front of a sold-out crowd in Columbus, Ohio, the Wisconsin Badgers outlasted Nebraska in five sets to claim the school's first national championship. Nobody up. You knew it was coming. And Dana Recky with championship point on Wisconsin. And an E. One for Wisconsin. It wound up being the most watched volleyball national title game in history, with nearly 1.2 million watchers on that December 18th night. What happened that night, however, sparked an idea that came to fruition eight months later, an event that has grown even more momentum for a sport that has long been in the dark. My name is Grace McNamara. I am the Senior Director of Television Administration at the Big Ten Conference and the Administrator for Women's Volleyball. McNamara isn't new to volleyball. In fact, she was a student athlete in college, competing for St. Louis University. After watching Wisconsin and Nebraska slug it out on that cold Columbus night, it sparked an idea. Why not create a Big Ten Volleyball Media Days? If the premier men's sports such as football and basketball get that treatment, shouldn't volleyball? I think the concept of a media day for volleyball has been floated for a couple of years, Um, but it really kind of came to fruition this year. I was at the Final Four in Columbus with Commissioner Warren and Diana Sabo, who's our Deputy Commissioner of the conference. And we were just, there was a record crowd. Uh, It ended up being record viewership. It was such a great environment. And um, Commissioner Warren always asks staff, you know, what is one thing that we can do better? And he asked me that question in Columbus. And that was when I suggested, hey, I think, you know, this sport is really ready for a media day. And I think it would be a good, you know, test run for from a female standpoint. And um, that's kind of how it started. The event took on many forms from there, as McNamara and the Big Ten discussed what an event like that would look like, and one of those ideas was hosting it at a Final Four location. However, being the first ever iteration, they landed on the Big Ten Network studios in downtown Chicago. Could we do it at the conference office? Um, We also talked about, you know, would it make sense going to like a Final Four location? or something like along those lines. And I think some of those are definitely still on the table for future iterations of this, but the doing it at the network, one, it's a great opportunity to get people, you know, I don't even know how many of our coaches have ever been down to Big Ten Network. So it's great from that sort of cohesive standpoint. What turned out was a unique setup 
as the press conference was hosted at the studio's giant conference room with media slotted on a conference table with a separate table set up in front where the coaches and athletes would speak. Each school brought three representatives, the head coach and two players. The Yeah, we wanted it to be, you know, it was not as much of a formal press style conference room where the people are lined up row after row. And we actually heard great feedback from that. Like people enjoyed being able to talk. It was a little bit different and also just sort of a function of the space itself. Um, so maybe a little untraditional, but I think people thankfully came in with an open mind. It was an occasion that was over two days with 14 member schools split up with seven teams attending each day. Their itinerary would be filled with interviews, filming TikToks, and eventually a giant dinner with all 14 teams present. The media coverage was exceptional, according to McNamara, as three times the number of media requests they expected showed up to the event. And aside from local media markets, that also included radio coverage from Sirius XM and ESPN, as well as different podcasts. In all, it was an event that everyone enjoyed, including Big Ten veteran coaches John Cook of Nebraska. Well, first of all, uh, about a month ago, Grace called me from the Big Ten. She said, what do you think about this idea? And I, I just said, well, it's great. Can you pull it off? And obviously she pulled it off. So thank you to the Big Ten. For, for doing this. This is an incredible experience for our student athletes. It's a great statement for our sport. Uh, one of my hopes and wishes from all of this is this is now going to spread to other conferences and continue to validate the growth of volleyball in this country and how big it is. And the Big Ten is certainly leading the way and setting the example. In Wisconsin's Kelly Sheffield. I think to start out with, there just there's so much gratitude for this uh, entire past couple days. Uh, looking at a a room full of, of people here that are that are that are trying to shine a spotlight onto onto our sport. Uh, I think this has been a first class. Uh, they've just uh, it's it's been done really really well. You know, one of the things that I think has been that's been fun today is, um, well, I think going in, I think uh, one of the things was this can't be a one-year deal. You know, this has got to be done in a way that people find value in this, and we get to year two or three. There's there's success if we're able to do that. But as I'm walking around, I'm, I'm you know, we're talking with all of the different people. It's uh, there's been. Uh, a lot of, all right, next year we're going to do this. We've got to do this better. And so the, you, you love to hear that. But on the other hand, if we're the only conference that's doing this this time next year, then then there's a little bit of failure in that, right? It's a, uh, you know, a, Big Ten has shown great leadership and and being the first one. But there's got to be three, four, seven conferences that are doing this next year. We are going to welcome in the Michigan State Spartans, including new head coach, Leah Johnson. Oh, hi, everyone. It was also a great platform for the new Big Ten coaches to showcase their players as well as their personality. That included Michigan State's Leah Johnson who totally revamped a Spartan roster that lost eight players to the transfer portal after Kathy George, Michigan State's winningest coach in program history, retired after last season. I've really found kind of a fearlessness in this process because this is it, right? This is the biggest stage that we can get on, um, the that highest accomplishment outside within collegiate athletics. And so, at this point, why would I hold anything back? Why would I worry what I ask for? Why would I worry um, how I coach like it's me? And I think that's been really rewarding versus throughout your career, you're like, well, I want to be perfect or I want to be this or I need to emulate this person because that's what they do at Name Your Big Ten School. And now I get to just be me because through that process I found myself and I'm still learning every day. They challenge me every day. I mean, we, I say all the time, I'm going to push you and I need you to push back. Like I have to get better too. I'm not, you're not the only one getting challenged in this room. And so I think that's been kind of the, the dual side of it. I get to go for it and boy, is there a lot to do. And so I'm trying to figure that out too. 
But why now? Why was this summer the time to host an event like this? To McNamara, the timing seemed right for a multitude of reasons. I think we really felt like this was the right moment with a national champion, a national runner-up, and also we have three new head coaches in the Big Ten, two of whom are female, for the first time in a long time. Um, and with the anniversary of Title IX, it just felt like we need to capitalize on this exact moment or we would lose the momentum. Um, so that's kind of why we pushed to get this to start now and see kind of what the reaction is, to get temperature of the event overall and review for the future. One overall sentiment, however, by coaches and players alike, is that they don't expect this to be the only volleyball media day event by the same time next year. To them, this wasn't an accumulation of the growth of volleyball. It was just a jumping off point. And luckily for them, the phones have already started ringing. Um, personally, I have not heard from anyone outside of the Power Five, and I won't specifically mention the who has reached out, but I don't, I think it also is, you, you do have to have like a foundation from a media standpoint to make something like this worthwhile. So again, as a former mid-major athlete, I would love to see this grow outside of maybe a power five realm, but I don't know what that looks like, you know, in the, in the very near future. Although this is a type of event that the big 10 not only wants power five conferences to put on, but also the group of five conferences. But what does that look like? How does a conference with very little footprint and money justify an event like the Big Ten hosted? To McNamara, who's been a part of the group of five conference, says it all starts at the fundamentals. From a mid-major standpoint, you know, the you just your priorities are probably different. Um, it, it likely honestly starts with like the exposure. So at the Big Ten, you know, they are on TV a lot. They are promoted a lot locally on radio. So I think it really starts from a, like a grassroots foundational perspective. Like, can you get into starting regionally and looking at, you know, where's the footprint of your conference and how can you all collectively work together to kind of make it more of a priority in that general area. And if anything, this event at least got the world to see John Cook dance on TikTok. The thing that might top it all off is the TikTok. They have you clap. So Kenzie and I had to close our eyes and clap at the same time. And I did my, my horse training. I sent my energy to her and we nailed it the second time. <laughs> I guarantee you that nobody else is going to get close. So that, was, that, that might have been the, the most epic moment of the day. That wraps up this episode of Huskers Unheard on the Inside Nebraska Podcast Network. Make sure to drop us a follow on Twitter at Nebraska Rivals and subscribe to our YouTube page at Inside Nebraska. And don't be afraid to drop myself a follow as well at EX underscore on underscore sports. I've been your host, Jeff Ekstrom, and we'll talk to you soon.